Okay. So thank you, everybody, and uh, welcome to today's session about workload tuning with Cure Optimizer for SQL Server. My name is Ami Levin. I'm um, the original founder of DBSophic and the designer of the product. Um, just a few words about DBSophic. DBSophic is a veteran company. This is now our eighth year of operation. Um, today's session is about our flagship product, which is called Cure Optimizer for SQL Server, which is an automatic solution for performance optimization for SQL Server workload. And unlike other tools in the market today, as you'll see in a minute, it uses a very unique holistic workload tuning approach, um, which I'll detail in a in a couple of minutes. Um, the tool was designed by myself and developed by myself and a couple of very talented guys at DBSophic. Um, I'm, I've been dealing with SQL Server for the past 25 years or so. And um, for the past 10 years, I've also been awarded a Microsoft MVP. Um, Cure Optimizer is being used by a large crowd of customers, which is growing every day, just to give you uh, a feel about the type of customers that are using um, Cure Optimizer. You can see on the screen in front of you, I'm sure you you're familiar with some of these companies. Some of these are Fortune 500 companies. Um, and some of these are smaller companies, software companies, banks. So customers from all walks and all sectors of the market can use workload tuning to their benefit. So um, Cure is not just a single product. Cure is actually a workload management suit. Um, today we're going to focus on the flagship product, which is the Cure Optimizer. Just be aware that Cure is, does not end with Cure Optimizer. There's also a tool called Cure Profiler, which is a real-time tool that allows you to identify SQL bottlenecks. Um, it allows you to monitor uh, activity and get a BI kind of uh, um, slice and dice view of what's actually going on. But it'll do more than that. It will allow you um, to compare SQL traces so you can know the impact of your changes. And it will also make real-time index recommendations. Um, but we can have a separate session on Cure Profiler. Today's session is about our um, flagship product, as I mentioned, which is the Cure Optimizer. To better understand what Cure Optimizer is all about and um, um, understand really what's unique about its approach, uh, we still we first have to understand what's the state of the art today in terms of uh, performance tuning. And this is something that we like to call query by query tuning. Now, um, I don't know, what kind of tools do you guys use today for uh, performance monitoring? Um, can you answer? And just remember to unmute your microphone. Are you using any third-party tools? Or are you using just the tools that come built in in SQL Server? Silverlight, Spotlight, sorry. Spotlight is one of the good tools which I am interacted with. Spotlight, yeah. Dell Spot. Yeah, Ec yes. excellent tool. Um, yep. What other tools do you use? Um, I don't use any of that other than Spotlight, but other than Spotlight, okay. So Spotlight, uh, anybody else using other tools? Uh, Idra SQL Performance Monitor tool. Idra SQL Performance Monitor, yeah. Okay, so these all belong to a family of tools which are called APM tools, Application Performance Management. And what's common to all of them, be that the Quest, the Idra, the SQL Sentry, whatever um, other tool that you're using, they all uh, adhere to the same query by query tuning approach. And th it works more or less as follows with slight variations. Um, on the screen in front of you, you have our production database, which is of course where you experience your pain. So what you wanna do is you wanna have something monitor that production environment, either 24-7 um, if you have a tool like Spotlight, or even if you use the native tools that come with SQL Server, like Activity Monitor, Profile, or Extended Events, whatever infrastructure that you use, they all use the same basic algorithm, which means monitor um, 
what's going on in production, take that monitoring data and store it offline. It could be a Spotlight repository, it could be a trace file, it doesn't really matter. You take what, whatever you record and capture from production and store it offline. Based on that, you then generate some sort of report. So for example, if you're experiencing CPU issues, you will probably want to list all your top CPU consumers, so then you can start targeting them for optimization. And the optimization is typically done by a human, a DBA or a developer, which then picks the top one, top two, top three CPU consumers or queries that he knows can probably be optimized in terms of CPU and then he takes those queries offline and uses whatever tools he has in his arsenal to try to optimize those queries. So it can be anything from manual work, uh, like rewriting the query, or using uh, Index Advisor, or just his experience to come up with better indexes to support that query. But everything is done offline. And once that person is happy with the results, he then takes these changes and applies them back to production. So there's nothing wrong with query by query tuning and of course I'm not saying that you should not monitor your uh, production environment or that you will not need to do query by query tuning, um, but Cure is a complementary product that actually helps you overcome some of the challenges involved with query by query tuning. And the main challenges are first, because uh, it's a human involved process and a human can only work on so many queries at a single time, it always comes to the point that only the top offenders can be optimized. So you might have 10,000 queries that can be optimized, but because of competing priorities and understaffing and just the pure limitations of human skills, you can only work on one, two, or three at a time, which means you always capture only the top layer of the queries and there will always be additional queries that you will probably never get to, although they can give you significant benefit. That also means that you're stuck in this vicious cycle that you're doing the same thing over and over again because once I optimized my top three consumers at the same time, guess what, congratulations, I just nominated different three to become the top consumers again. And of course the process repeats it over and over again, so as we know, it's an endless cycle. But one of the dangerous aspects of query by query tuning, if not done carefully, is the potential for unexpected side effects. Which means that if um, I happen to tune a specific query and I come up with this marvelous index that makes it run 10 times faster, and I'm so happy with it, I just run apply it to production, only to find out um, five minutes later that my marvelous index has just degraded 10 other processes that I wasn't even aware of that could be using that index. So being able to tell what the true impact of every change in a complicated environment like a SQL Server database is almost impossible to do. And I say almost because that is true until you start using workload tuning. So how does workload tuning differ from query by query tuning? Um, well, you still have your production environment and this is still where you uh, experience your pain and as I mentioned, you're not going to change your ways, you're still going to monitor production and you're still going to make sure everything runs fine. But Cure takes a more holistic and reactive approach so you don't have to wait for something to become painful in order to take care of it. We can actually take care of it proactively before it becomes an issue. And workload tuning works in the following way. It doesn't do, have anything to do with production. Unlike on other monitoring tools, you don't need a connection to production. You don't need to install anything on production. The whole process is done completely offline. But of course, that um, poses several requirements. And the first requirement is that you can make a full copy of the production database on a non-production server. And that is the first requirement for Cure Optimizer. 
So you can use your staging server, you can use your dev server, you can use, um, I don't know, cloud servers if you can't uh, um, have one on site. But in any case, it is crucial that the analysis is not done on production, but on a copy of production. In addition, you will need a SQL trace from production based on a template that Cure Optimizer provides. It's a relatively low template. It only captures stored procedure completed and uh, SQL batch completed. There are no statement level events there. Um, and it is also important to understand that because these are the only two inputs that will be used by Cure Optimizer, it is very important to provide as wide as possible range of queries um, for your trace. Now, we are aware that traces um, can be challenging for some uh, extremely loaded servers. That's why Cure will also allow you uh, not to do a continuous, so for example, if you want to capture 24 hours of activity, you don't have to run the trace for 24 hours. You can run it for, I don't know, an hour in the morning when you know there's a specific type of activity, maybe an hour at noon, maybe hour in, in the night, maybe a couple of hours over the weekend. Again, as long as eventually the trace or the collection of traces uh, compose a representative um, part of the workload. Now, Cure itself, the client, can be installed on any workstation on the network. As I said, it only needs access to that copy of production and to the trace files. And I'll show you in a minute how simple it is to run on a Cure optimization when you have, once you have these two in place. It literally takes 30 seconds to run an analysis, and I'll prove that in a minute. Now, once you start an analysis, Cure will connect to that copy of production, and because it is a true copy of production, Cure can learn everything there is to know about your uh, production environment, or not in terms of hardware, but in, of course in terms of the database. So Cure will go ahead and look at the database configurations. It will go and analyze the schema. It will go through every table, column, view, constraint, index, you name it. All the schema objects are fully parsed and analyzed. Cure creates an abstraction of your database and stores it inter internally, and it will use that information as we'll see in a minute, to help with the optimization. Once it understands the schema and knows all your objects in the database, it will move on and analyze the actual data. It will create statistical aggregates over each and every table and each and every column. And that allows Cure to come up with much more intelligent recommendations because it knows the statistical distribution, it knows which areas, as you'll see in a minute, may be more prone to conflicts between inserts and selects, for example, and it can work its recom tuning recommendations around those um, basic given facts. So now Cure knows everything about your schema and your data. The last thing it needs to understand to complete the picture is the workload, and of course the workload is provided as part of the trace. Now the trace may have ad hoc queries, select inserts, updates, it may have calls to stored procedure, it may have calls to functions. Cure actually has a full T-SQL parser built in, so it can take any query, any text query, bind it to the object in the database. So for example, if you have select star from table A, Cure already knows what table A is. It already knows what data is in there. So it can now understand not only what your query or how your query is written, but actually what your query is trying to do. And that will give Cure the option to provide alternative syntaxes, as we'll see in a minute, completely automatically. So once that process uh, is complete, Cure will come up with a set of recommendations and I emphasize that have the potential to enhance performance. And why do I say uh, potential? 
because at this point in time, Cure doesn't really know what impact all these recommendations will have. So true, Cure is very smart, and it has been around for long, and it has been tweaked and tuned over and over again. But still, for every database and for every dis data distribution, as you all know, the query optimizer can behave completely differently. So at this point, this is the initial set of potential recommendations. But Cure will never show you this set, because Cure will only show you recommendations that have been tested and validated. And in order to do that, after the initial set is, is constructed, Cure moves on to the benchmark phase. The benchmark phase means that Cure is going to replay the entire workload first against that copy of production as is to establish a baseline. Because this server might be different than production, and because typically concurrency patterns are different between, um, just please everybody mute your microphones, I'm getting feedback and noise back here. Thank you. Um, so as I was saying, um, the hardware is different, and the patterns that Cure executes the, the queries, which is basically serially, um, differs, so we cannot rely on the performance uh, performance metrics that are in the trace files, although they are used to come up with the original set of recommendations. So Cure will replay the entire workload against the copy of production, establish a baseline, then it will go and create change scripts which will automatically apply all these changes against that copy of production. And this is, again, a critical point to understand. Cure will actually modify the database. It will rewrite your stored procedures, it will create indexes, it will modify your schema, and as we'll see in a minute, it'll do many other things. So now that we have the database in its modified or optimized state, Cure can then move on and do another replay of the entire workload again against that copy of production. And now it can capture each and every query, its full performance metrics, and, and we'll see even the execution plans. And it can analyze the difference between the replay that happened in the baseline before the recommendations were made, before the changes were made, and after. And now Cure can look at each query and see exactly what happened to it because of those changes. Now, ideally, in an ideal world where Cure is an ideal, ever and everything works more or less the same, that should be enough. However, Cure is aware that it can also, because of the different behaviors of different databases, some of the recommendations may not be as um, good as it's originally thought. Maybe those changes cause slightly other changes in the way the stored procedures uh, behave and your queries run. So Cure will take this opportunity, it won't be lazy, and it'll actually do another step of fine-tuning the recommendations which means based on the actual replay and the actual execution plans, it will say, okay, this is not good enough, let's try something else, maybe this can be tweaked a little better. So it can actually do several iterations of this fine-tuning uh, step where the recommendations get distilled and distilled and distilled. Typically, one to two cycles are all that it's needed. In some rare, complex cases, it might take three cycles. But um, again, remember, the whole process is completely unattended. From the moment that you click Start Analysis, everything that I show you here is done for you without any intervention. So once the recommendations have been fine-tuned, now you have a set of recommendations that are not hypothetical. They have been tested, validated, and because they have been tested and validated, that also means that Cure had to generate the scripts that apply them. So you get that as a bonus. So all that's left for you to do is look at that report, which we'll see in a minute, um, select the, qu the queries that you want to optimize. You immediately get the script which you can use and then you take it 
apply it to production, apply it to QA typically before you go to production, but just put it in the pipeline of the, the changes that need to go to production and you're pretty much done. And of course it's completely safe because Cure will not only tell you each recommendation what it did for that particular query, but also how it impacted each and every other query in your workload if it did. And Cure knows that based on the execution plans. So this whole process can take, and depending on the size of the database, the size of the workload, the complexity, the hardware environment, and many other factors, it can take anywhere from uh, typically a few hours and up to a few days even for large and complex databases. And you can run it over the weekend. Again, it doesn't have to be attended. Just let it run, finish its course, and um, get the benefit immediately. So, um, instead of talking about what Cure can do, I think the best thing to do will be actually to show you how um, you work with Cure Optimizer. Um, so I'll give it a minute for your screens to refresh. And I already have a copy of my quote production database. And I'm gonna start a new analysis. So let's click Start New Optimization. I'm going to choose a trial optimization. So the first thing I need to choose is where I'm going to store my repository for um, Cure Optimizer data. There are two options. There's a file option and there's a SQL Server database option. In most cases, you would want the SQL server data is because of performance and manageability. So I'm going to connect to my local server. I'm going to call this demo one. Now Cure goes ahead, creates a database on my local server. And remember that database is going to be used only for Cure's internal data. So now that I have my repository, next thing, I'm going to connect to my copy of production, which in my case happens to be on the same machine. Now, as you'll notice, there is a message here and it has a timer to allow you to read it. And again, just because some people did not understand how Cure works and we had cases where people ran the analysis against production, which is highly not recommended. So now you can see that we have a very clear warning message that says continue, local is not a production server. So now I can connect. So now Cure connected to, uh, Cure connected to my server and gives me a list of all the databases that are eligible for um, analysis. I'm gonna choose just one. By the way, you can choose multiple databases. Um, um, if you have an application that uses multiple databases, you can analyze it all as a single uh, unit. You don't have to run multiple analyses. The next thing I need to do is to provide the trace. So let me add a trace file. I believe I put it on my desktop, yes. So here we have a trace file, which contains the workload. I click Next. Then Cure provides me with a very complicated uh, options menu. Um, actually, the full analysis has two more options. Typically, you will leave these at default. Uh, you can read more about what each of those mean. Um, I'm not gonna go into that. I'll just leave it at default. Click Next. Review your very complex settings so far. Click Start Optimization, and from here on, everything that I've showed you before um, is done completely unattended. Now I'm gonna, I just paused it, but uh, if you look on the left, you can see the navigation bar. Let me make this bigger. You can see the navigation bar, so you can see it will do the schema analysis, the trace analysis, the data statistical analysis, the recommendation generation, and then automatically it will move through the benchmark phase, and then that will open up with all the specific details, and in the end, we will get to the interactive report. Now, as I said, this can take a little time, so I'm not gonna wait here. Instead, I am going to abort this analysis, and move on to a ready-made analysis that we have. And 
there are three things I want to say about the analysis that you're about to see. First of all, this is not a demo. This is an actual production analysis of one of our customers who was kind enough to allow us to use this as a demo. And the other thing is that what you're about to see here is in no way unique. This is actually pretty typical of the results you will get when you run a cure, um, a cure optimization. So let's look at the general details here. Um, this was the store that was used, the database. You can see it's a relatively small database, about 20 gigabytes, but still the analysis you can see lasted for 30 hours. That's more than a day. That sounds like a lot to analyze 20 gigabytes, but if you look at the size of the workload, which is here, you can see that it took your 30, in those 30 hours, it actually, it analyzed more than 700,000 queries. Now you tell me how long it will take you to analyze 700,000 queries and nearly 2,000 stored procedures, functions, views, all the objects that reside in the database, about 500 tables with nearly 7,000 columns. Okay, so that gives us the general information. And based on that analysis, Cure has come up with a total of 850 recommendations. That includes nearly 400 object rewrites, more than 200 indexes that need to be modified, uh, schema recommendation, ad hoc batch rewrites, miscellaneous. We'll see all those in a minute. Um, you also notice that on the right side, it gives you a rough scale of what the impact was for each category. So, rewrite, in this case, rewrite objects and create indexes actually had the largest impact, but in some other analyses, you will see that it may be actually the schema or the batch rewrites that had the most impact. But this will give you just a general indication of the health of each aspect of your database design. So now that we've seen the summary, let's go and drill in to the actual workload. So if I switch to the workload view, in the top you can see that I have four different tabs. The optimization results, before optimization, after optimization, and production trace. I'm going to start with the production trace. and just to be f get familiar with the terms and the UI, and then we'll move to the more um, in-depth screens. What you see here in the production trace tab is basically a breakdown of your workload, but in a very, very interesting way. So if I highlight the first batch here, and the first batch you can see is currently sorted by duration, you can see that this specific batch consumed nearly 30% of the entire workload's duration. Now, if you're not worried about duration, but you're worried more about CPU, I can do the same trick for CPU, and you can see here that I have a different query that is actually responsible for 35% of the total CPU consumption. So this can quickly give you an idea of what's going on in the system and where you should focus your efforts. However, the fact that we show you that is not enough. First of all, the execute to the stored procedure is nice. We can see the actual script. And what you can see here, if I switch to the script tab at the bottom, the details, you can see that the actual parameter values have been stripped. So Cure parameterizes every execution, stored procedures, and ad hoc queries. And what you see here is actually the aggregate for all executions, regardless of parameter values. However, that's not good enough. This is something that Quest Spotlight will do for you as well. However, what Quest Spotlight won't do for you is allow you to see the individual values that were used for each invocation of the stored procedure and their relative resource consumption as part of the batch. So you can see here we had one invocation that took 38 seconds, 
while another invocation with different parameters took 13 seconds. And Cure knows that. And Cure consults that. And Cure will actually look at that and try to optimize the way the stored procedure works to avoid or to minimize these large deviances from individual batch invocations. We'll see all of that in a minute. Um, so this is um, for the production trace. Now we have two more two more tabs here, before optimization and after optimization. These are very, very similar only for different runs of the workload. So the before optimization one means this is a breakdown of everything that has happened when the workload was replayed against the copy of production before applying any changes. And you can see that here actually there's a different batch that came up as the top consumer. In this case, it's JSS fetch job. Here, we also have an additional tab at the bottom. As you remember, I mentioned that we also get an execution plan. So now, if I want to see why this guy is uh, are my top duration consumer, I can go to the execution plan and actually see exactly what is going on here. Now, when I select this batch, it stays selected when I move between tabs, meaning that if I'm looking at JSS fetch job and the total time originally was 11 hours, if I switch to the after optimization, you can see that this guy stays selected and now after the optimization, it has been reduced from 11 hours to less than 10 seconds. Now that sounds radical, and I guarantee you in most analyses that you will run with Cure, you will find um, one or more of these several order of magnitude improvements. And we'll see, we'll see that in a second. And of course, I can also see the execution plan after the after applying the recommendation. So then I can go and compare the execution plan after. However, because it is extremely inconvenient um, to switch back and forth between the before optimization and the after optimization, that's why the default view is actually the delta, the difference between before and after, just presented in a, in a slightly different way. So we will focus on the optimization result, and as you can see, when I select a specific batch, I get the same data only shown graphically. So it took 11 hours originally and after optimization it was reduced to nine and a half seconds. It consumed more than 70 million reads originally um, and was reduced to 140,000, et cetera, et cetera. You can see the rest. I don't need to drill down. But even better than that, if I switch to the execution plan and select an individual parameter set, you can see here that I highlighted the main thing that changed between plans. And again, this is something that Cure actually looks at and understands. And in here you can see that on the left, the original plan had something to do with a clustered index scan within a nested loops, which means it got done several times. And after optimization, Optimization, the same object is now accessed using an index seek, which kind of hints you of what the optimization was about. It was either changing or adding an index that was not there before, or rewriting the query in a way that it can better use the index, so now it uses an index seek instead of a table scan. However, luckily for you, you don't really have to guess anything, because if I switch to the recommendations tab, Cure will now give you, <coughs> sorry, a list of all the recommendations that have affected this particular batch. And you can see there are two indexes and a single rewrite. Now remember, total we had how many? We had 850 recommendations. And actually, if I move to the recommendations tab, by default, the view 
will show me all 850 recommendations. However, we are aware that uh, dealing with a thousand recommendations is pretty much not practical, right? You cannot, you cannot do anything with a thousand recommendations manually. So Cure will allow you to switch to the recommendations but only focus on the ones that interest you for that particular batch. So let's say I'm interested in optimizing JSS fetch job. All I have to do is follow the link. All the blue fonts here are links. This will take me back to the recommendations window but will also apply a filter which says show me only the recommendations that affect JSS fetch job. And these two are categorized. So I have a create index, I have an object rewrite, and I have miscellaneous recommendations. Some of them are simply associated with all batches, for example, rebuild and update statistics. But we'll get to those later. So let's say I want to look at these two indexes. So I get a general description of what the index is about, what the columns are, what the included columns are, what will be the size impact. This is an estimated size of, of the, so if this is a, something on a huge table and you need to allocate more space, you'll know that in advance. And when I select a particular recommendation, Cure will give me the in English rationale of why it thinks this recommendation will do. Um, and of course, in some cases, it will give you links if you want to read more about the nature of the recommendation and why it, it is. That in the case of an index, it's pretty obvious. And this will be similar to um, most indexes. Now, if I switch to the script preview, it will give you the actual script. This is the actual script that was used to apply those indexes on the copy of production. And of course I can select multiple recommendations and the script will update to reflect all of them. So even if you have a thousand indexes or a hundred indexes, you can get them all in one script. So that is great, right? But before I create any index, before I add anything to my database, I want to make sure that I'm not going to hurt anything else. And that is, as I mentioned, one of the challenges when you do query by query tuning. However, because Cure captured and analyzed all the execution plans of all the other queries as well, it can tell you that this index actually affected four different batches as well. So it affected JSS fetch job, but it also affected JSS create job. It also affected JSS job completed, et cetera, et cetera. And remember, all the blue fonts are links. So if I want to make sure that create job has not been degraded, all I have to do is click it. Take me here, and you can actually see that because we added an index and this is an uh, update operation or an insert operation, you can actually see that it has been slightly degraded from 10,000 reads to 17,000 reads. But the overall impact on duration was um, about 50 milliseconds, okay, which is kind of um, a pretty good price to pay for a recommendation that just gave us several orders of magnitude improvement on our top consumer. But you don't have to guess because the first link here that says four batches will do the same thing. It will take you back and select these batches and show you the performance for all of them. So now you can see that the total for all batches that were affected was a 99% improvement in duration, 99% improvement in physical reads, et cetera, et cetera. So now that I know what my indexes are, what the total impact will be, I can simply go ahead to the script preview, select them all, take the script, save it to file, or I can actually do, your will also give you an opportunity to applied easily from within the tool by changing their status to accept and then move to deploy, they will automatically um, appear here, all your accepted recommendations, and then you can move ahead and deploy it directly from here. 
So that's one way to work with Cure, but that's basically doing a query by query tuning in a more sophisticated way. But the exact same thing that I just did for a single batch, I can do with the same effort for my top five consumers. Just selecting my top five by holding and dragging now gives me the total improvement for all of these batches together. But why stop at five when I can select my top 10, my top 20, or even my top 50? So let's go with our top 50. I have now selected 50 recommendations, sorry, 50 batches. I can see that the total improvement in terms of duration is going to be 75%. By the way, you can see there is an increase in CPU here, which we can target down. And if we're afraid that this is something that we don't want, because you know it in advance, you can simply unselect uh, the recommendation that gives you um, a CPU re degradation like this guy. So now it's out of the equation, and now I know that my recommendations are not going to negatively impact CPU. So let's go back to the recommendations. All I have to do is grab these 92 indexes, 22 rewrites, modify schema, miscellaneous, etc. Let's do that. And I'll show you a couple of rewrites as well. So I think this is one of the most exciting features of Cure, is its ability to automatically rewrite uh, queries. So let me find one that is kind of simple so we can start. Let's clear the filter so I can get more recommendations. So let's start with even something simple as suboptimal option settings for cursors. And let's open this in a larger window. On the left, you see the original code. On the right, you see the rewritten code. In this case, the rewrite is trivial. All it did was replace the read only with a fast forward option, which provides better internal optimization. This is a benign example, right? But you can see you get the before and after script, which was used. Another example, which is a little more involved, you can see here on the left, there was a query that had um, account ID in net ID and pub ID, which basically translates to an OR. Many times, ORs will prevent SQL Server from using indexes because of in inability to correctly estimate the selectivity. But since Cure knows the selectivity and it knows that both NetID and PubID are both highly, highly selective, what it will do, it will rewrite this in a way that the query is split into two queries with a union between them, one looking for NetID and one looking for a pub ID, and now you have two very series that can use the indexes and being unioned together. So this is, again, a simple example of a rewrite. Let's take one that is a little bit even more involved. For example, let's take uh, a join. So here we have two tables being joined, but Cure understands that because of the select list only contains columns from one, this is actually not a full join. This is what is called a semi-join because the second table is only used to filter out values from the first. And Cure knows that in most cases, this is actually much better written as an exist, and Cure will take and do that for you. So. As you can see, Cure will automatically analyze your queries, understand what they're doing, and come up with recommendations that include rewrites, uh, indexes, also schema recommendations. Now, schema recommendations are treated slightly differently because there's more risk involved. Cure will give you uh, recommendations for anything that it can test, but for something that it cannot test, for example, a column that is unused, it will not provide a script just to avoid you actually executing it in error. Or, for example, untrusted foreign keys, missing constraints, duplicate constraints, 
and many other schema issues. Secure can actually even detect design anomalies and come up with recommendations for uh, design changes as well. Um, same thing applies for batches. So if we have, for example, an ad hoc batch where you can see how Cure rewrote the predicate to allow index use, the original query has the column as part of a function which doesn't allow index use and the same, same thing can be rewritten in a slightly different way where the column is not part of the function and that will allow statistics and index use. So the only difference between this and the object rewrites is this is something you're going to have to do in the application source code. Other than that, they're all tested, benchmarked like before. Miscellaneous recommendations consist of typically best practices that have been observed to be violated in the database. So, for example, if you have select star in the database, Cure will show you all the places that these, it will explain why it's not a good idea to use it, but it won't fix it for you. Um, places where queries use union uh, but might use union all. So if Cure knows for sure you can use union all, it'll actually rewrite it. If it's not sure, it will point you to it, and then it's up to you to make the decision whether or not this can. This is something that you can actually apply. So I can stay with you for. 10 more hours here and show you we're barely scratching the surface of what Cure can do, but I think we kind of covered the main functionality. So just as a quick reminder of what you need to do to run a Cure analysis. So all you have to do, get a copy of your production database restored on a non-production server, get your trace file from production, um, Install Cure on any uh, workstation on the network. Takes a couple of seconds to start the analysis. Once uh, the analysis completes, you come back, you get a report similar to this, where you can just grab your top 10, top 50, top 100, top 1,000, it's really up to you, of uh, the top improved batches. You can tell in advance exactly what will happen in terms of performance, both for good and for bad. So remember here we have adding indexes, so that naturally will incur more writes. How many? Usually it's a mystery. Cure will tell you exactly what the penalty is for adding these indexes and what the benefit is, so you can make up your mind. And once we did that, I'll just move on to the recommendations click the link to filter only the ones that I'm interested here in, select all, Cure will go ahead, jit the script, and here you have a full applicable script that you can take, including all the indexes, all the rewrites, take it, apply it to QA, and bam, you're done. So that's pretty much what workload tuning um, is about. Just to give you a rough feeling of, um, you know, we took a typical sample of a hundred databases and you can see how much they were improved. Um, there is a small percentage of databases, about 5% that will not be improved, some will be slightly improved, but 80% of the databases have shown improvements overall between 25 and 93%. So this is overall. So if you have any questions or if you want to add something, uh, I'm, here, I'm here for you. And if not, then I'll just thank you very much. Obvious thing, uh, so if you have a production environment and you already you have uh, performance issues, that will be, of course, the first natural uh, use case if you want to solve your performance issues. But you were right that even if you have new applications or new versions of the application, you, ca you can run Cure Optimizer um, uh, when you load test in your QA environment and at least do the major bulk of optimizations before you even deploy to production. So you can avoid the performance pains that are typically associated with launching a new application into production environment. So, of course, 
we highly recommend that even though you do it in load testing, your workload it will never be 100% the same as production. So you get the bulk of the optimizations before you deploy, you save yourself the headache. But then a couple of months later, when the system stabilizes, it is recommended to run another analysis and then you'll grab the extra 20% of uh, optimization that you can have. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Um, and I see Prakash has a question, says it's more like SQL Server DTA. Um, database Tuning Advisor is nothing like Cure for a couple of reasons. First of all, it does do index recommendation and statistic recommendations only. It doesn't provide, it doesn't know anything about the schema, it doesn't provide anything about rewrites, it only does basic indexes and uh, statistics, but DTA is a query by query tuning tool. It doesn't look at the entire workload and it will give you an index recommendation, but it won't tell you what impact that index will have on all your other queries. So DTA is basically a helper tool for query by query tuning, unlike workload tuning, which looks at the entire workload and gives you holistic recommendations. So I hope that is okay. clear. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but there's in the DTA, there's an option of a workload tuning also. If you can supply trace to that uh, DTA, then it will analyze that trace and then give you the recommendation. Yes, but it does that on a query by query basis. It doesn't do a replay. It takes your entire trace, looks one query at the time, and gives you recommendation per query. It doesn't look at it holistic. Believe me, I know DTA intimately. And if you look at the recommendations that DTA provides and the index recommendations that we provide, I can guarantee you we tested it several times that our index algorithms of our order of magnitude better than what DTA does. DTA does a try and error thing. We actually parse the queries and understand them. That's a radical basic difference between the quality of the oh, indexes passing. that you can get. Uh, yes, first thing I want to know about people, people are, afraid, uh, people are afraid of using DDA because, as you said, it gives analysis only for a statistic basis. Yes. So, so like, instead of, like, instead of using DDA, if we started working queer in our environment, will it hamper your performance or something else? Exactly. So I'm sure you, you have experienced that, that you take a DTA recommendation only to find out after the fact that you've actually hurt yourself instead of improving. Oh yes, in many occasions it happens. Like DTA only improves a particular query which is supposed or which is paid to him, but it makes oh. hard for the queries to perform faster. Okay, correct. Um, Bonnie asks, how can I be assured that the results shown in the report are accurate? Very good question, Bonnie. Um, so um, when you run Cure, even before you purchase a license or decide to purchase a license, you can run a trial analysis which is 100% free. The trial analysis will do almost everything that I've shown you here with one difference, it will only re reveal the recommendations for five batches. So you can take these recommendations, see what Cure had to say about them, and because you took the trouble and downloaded the product and ran the full trial analysis, these five, all the recommendations for these five batches are yours completely free. So don't be assured, don't trust us. Take, run a trial analysis, take the sample recommendations that you get 100% free, test them out in production, and see for yourself. Does thank, that answer you, your question, Bonnie? Yes, uh, thank you. I have another question. Um, can you refer about the differences between uh, this product and uh, uh, PA or even uh, Foglite? Um, yeah, I think I kind of covered that in the beginning. PA, uh, Foglight, Idera, SQL Sentry, they're all monitor, they're all reactive monitoring tools that monitor production and only alert you when something is already wrong. So now when you have 100% CPU um, on, on your server and now you're trying to find whoever is responsible for that, you already paid the price, right? So 
The other thing is they also, they don't look at the entire, they give you, if you want to optimize with PA, for example, with the, what is think they call it the query studio or something or performance studio, um, then again, it's a query by query thing. None of them will give you actual recommendations. None of them will look at the entire workload. None of them will give you rewrites. None of them will give you the actual impact, holistic impact of each change on the entire workload. It's a different concept. It's not like there's a different feature here and there. It's a completely different concept. Thank you. Any other questions? I guess not, and we are right on time. So um, I want to thank you very much again uh, for um, spending the time to look at Cure Optimizer. And as I said, you're more than welcome to download the tool and we will help you set up, just contact us, we'll help you set up and run a proper um, trial analysis, which is 100% free. Not only is it free, you'll actually get several recommendations out of it, so you can test for yourself, see that we're not bluffing, that this is act, actually does what it claims it does, and I think that will be your best incentive to um, want to try and run the full analysis. So again, thank you very much. Uh, Aviv, Rami, you want to yeah. say anything? Yeah. To Many